The sound you are hearing here are coarse crepitations which are heard in many conditions but specifically for this video in which we are going to talk about bronchiectasis this is a typical sound for bronchiectasis welcome to last second medicine and in this video we will have a brief overview of bronchiectasis bronchiectasis means abnormal dilatation of the bronchi and bronchioles it is chronic suppurative airway infection with sputum production, progressive scarring, and lung damage. One of the important issues in the bronchiectasis is recurrent infection, and main organisms involved in these infections are same as that of COPD, that is Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staph aureus, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Bronchiectasis may result from a congenital defect affecting airway ion transport such as cystic fibrosis or ciliary function such as immotile cilia syndrome or cartagena syndrome or it may be an acquired condition secondary to damage to the airways by destructive infection, inhaled toxin or foreign body. The result is chronic inflammation and infection of the bronchi and bronchioles leading to the permanent dilatation and thinning of these airways. Localized bronchiectasis may occur due to accumulation of pus beyond an obstructing bronchial lesion such as enlarged tuberculous, hilar lymph nodes, a bronchial tumor or an inhaled foreign body. The bronchiectatic cavities may be lined by granulation tissue, squamous epithelium or normal ciliated epithelium. There may also be inflammatory changes in the deeper layers of the bronchial wall and hypertrophy of the bronchial arteries. Chronic inflammation and fibrotic changes are usually found in the surrounding lung tissue, resulting in progressive destruction of the normal lung architecture in advanced cases. Coming on to causes leading to bronchiectasis, it can be divided into congenital causes and acquired causes. Congenital causes include cystic fibrosis, Young syndrome, primary ciliary dyskinesia or immotile cilia syndrome, Cartagena syndrome, or primary hypogamma globulinemia. In acquired causes, most common is post infection in childhood like measles, pertussis, bronchiolitis, suppurative pneumonia, tuberculosis, which is the most common cause of bronchiectasis worldwide, and HIV infection. Causes other than infection include bronchial obstruction by tumor or foreign body or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which causes proximal or perihilar bronchiectasis, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis or it may be idiopathic. Most common symptom is cough which is chronic, daily and persistent. The cough is productive of purulent sputum and it is copious in amount. Pleuritic chest pain occurs when infection spreads to involved pleura or with segmental collapse due to retained secretions. Streaks of blood is common and larger volumes with exacerbation of infection may occur and rarely massive hemoptysis requiring bronchial artery embolization occurs. Infective exacerbations occurs and there is increased sputum volume along with fever, malaise and anorexia. Halitosis frequently accompanies purulent sputum. There is difficulty maintaining weight, anorexia, exertional shortness of breath. Physical signs in the chest may be unilateral or bilateral. If the bronchiectatic airways do not contain secretions and there is no associated lobar collapse, there are no abnormal physical signs. But when there are large amount of sputum in the bronchiectatic spaces, numerous coarse crackles may be heard over the affected areas. When there is collapse with retained secretions blocking a proximal bronchus, that may lead to localized diminished breath sounds while advanced disease may cause scarring and overlying bronchial breathing. Finger clubbing is common and wheeze may be audible in asthma, COPD and allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Complications include pneumonia, pleural effusions, pneumothorax, 
hemoptysis, cerebral abscess, and amyloidosis. Sputum culture is important. In addition to common respiratory pathogens, sputum culture may reveal Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staph aureus, fungi such as Aspergillus, and various mycobacteria. Frequent cultures are necessary to ensure appropriate treatment of resistant organisms. Chest X-ray Unless very gross, bronchiectasis is not usually apparent on a chest X-ray. In advanced disease, thickened air walls, cystic bronchiectatic spaces, and associated areas of pneumonic consolidation or collapse may be visible on chest X-ray. There are also visible thickened bronchial walls that is tram line and ring shadows. High resolution CT scan is much more sensitive and show thickened dilated airways. It also helps to assess extent and distribution of disease. Spirometry often shows an obstructive pattern and FE1 to FEC ratio is usually less than 0.7. Reversibility should be assessed. Bronchoscopy is done usually to locate site of hemoptysis to exclude obstruction and to obtain samples for culture. Other tests may include testing serum immunoglobulin levels, chloride sweat test for cystic fibrosis, for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, aspergillus precipitans, or skin prick test or total IgE testing. Tests for ciliary dysfunction can be done. A screening test can be performed in patients suspected of having ciliary dysfunction syndrome by measuring the time taken for a small pellet of saccharin placed in the anterior chamber of the nose to reach the pharynx, at which point the patient can taste it. This time should not exceed 20 minutes but is greatly prolonged in patients with ciliary dysfunction. Ciliary beat frequency may also be assessed from biopsies taken from nose. Structural abnormalities of cilia can be detected by electron microscopy. Chest physiotherapy and devices such as flutter well may aid sputum expectoration and mucus drainage. Patients should be shown how to perform regular daily physiotherapy to assess the drainage of excess bronchial secretions. Efficiently executed, this is of great value both in reducing the amount of cough and sputum and in preventing recurrent episodes of bronchopulmonary infection. For postural drainage, patient should lie in a position in which the lobe to be drained is uppermost. Deep breathing followed by forced expiratory maneuvers helps to move secretions in the dilated bronchi towards the trachea, from which they can be cleared by vigorous coughing. Devices that increase airway pressure either by a constant amount like by positive expiratory pressure mask or in an oscillatory manner by flutter valves like shown here, aid sputum clearance in some patients and a variety of techniques should be tried to find the one that suits the individual. The optimum duration and frequency of physiotherapy depends on the amount of sputum, but 5 to 10 minutes twice daily is a minimum for most patients. For most patients with bronchiectasis, the appropriate antibiotics are the same as those used in COPD, but larger doses and longer courses are required, and resolution of symptoms is often incomplete. Antibiotics should be prescribed according to bacterial sensitivities. Those patients who are culture positive for pseudomonas will require either oral ciprofloxacin or suitable IV antibiotics including anti-pseudomonal beta-lactam, for example, piperacillin, tazobactam, or ceftazidine. If there are three or more exacerbations in a year, consider using long-term antibiotics, maybe nebulized cholestine. Hemoptysis in bronchiectasis often respond to treatment of the underlying infection. In severe cases, percutaneous embolization of the bronchial circulation by an interventional radiologist may be necessary. Bronchodilators, for example, nebulized solbutamol, are used in patients with airflow obstructions like seen in asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Sometimes glucocorticoids can also be used. Corticosteroids, for example, prednisolone and etraconazole, are used for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Surgery may be indicated in localized disease or to control severe hemoptysis. The disease is progressive when associated with ciliary dysfunction and cystic fibrosis and it eventually causes respiratory failure. In other patients, the prognosis can be relatively good if physiotherapy is performed regularly and antibiotics are used aggressively. As bronchiectasis commonly starts in childhood following measles, whooping cough, or a primary tuberculosis infection, adequate prophylaxis and treatment of these conditions are essential.
early recognition and treatment of bronchial obstruction are also important thank you for watching i hope you liked this video let us know about your views in the comment section below please consider sharing with your colleagues and subscribe to this channel